Apple has just announced a whole bunch of Macs and that's what this video is about. So let's uncover them. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more, but I've literally sat on this chair just after the Apple event has finished and I'm gonna to talk to you about what I've just seen because this has been a crazy Apple event for sure. So they've unveiled three new Macs and one of which I definitely wasn't expecting and one I thought I would see and unfortunately I didn't see or fortunately I didn't see. Now before we get into what Macs they launched, let's talk about what's in them and that is the M1 chip. We finally have a name for the first Apple Silicon for the Mac. So the M1 chip is basically going to replace all of the Intel chips that we currently see in the Mac lineup. And this is because rather than having a whole bunch of chips with the Intel chips, to make them sort of work the way that Apple wanted them to work. The M1 allows them to integrate all of this and also share a unified memory architecture, which basically means that everything can access the same memory to improve performance and energy efficiency. Now the M1 chip is based on a five nanometer chip, which has 16 billion transistors and is an eight core CPU. Now the eight cores are broken up as four performance cores or high performance cores and four efficiency cores. Now in terms of the high performance cores, Apple states that this is the world's fastest CPU core that we've ever seen, which again is pretty nuts. Now in terms of the CPU performance, we also see the world's best CPU per watt performance than we've ever seen before. Now they showed a graph that said that at 10 watts, the CPU performance is two times better than we've seen previously. And again, if you have a look at that line on the graph that they showed up, I mean, it looks like basically none of the Apple Silicon chips will basically be at higher wattages, which could mean we're seeing maybe smaller power supplies and obviously better efficiency, which is what obviously Apple want to do. Now they also say that the performance is three times better uh, per watt than what's currently available on the PC side of things. Now let's talk about the GPU because this is a really interesting subject, especially for integrated graphics. Now this has an eight core GPU or up to eight core GPU, which I'll get into in a moment and can perform up to 2.6 teraflops. Now in terms of the 10 watt performance, which is what they seem to be claiming all the time, which makes me think that are these chips running at 10 watts? Maybe so, I'll have to test that. But they offer up to two times better performance. This also has a 16 core neural engine, as well as the secure enclave and everything like that. Now, when comparing the M1 chip to Intel, they basically said that it was essentially faster than those Intel chips and how that if the app is optimized, obviously they will perform way better than those Intel chips. However, if those apps haven't been optimized for the M1 chip, running it through Rosetta 2 on certain cases will actually perform better on the M1 chip than on the Intel chip natively, which is kind of a testament firstly to the M1 chip, as well as the Rosetta 2 performance as well. They also spoke about how, because this is an Apple Silicon chip, that essentially you can run iPhone apps onto your Mac as well, obviously if the Apple developer allows it to. But anyway, let's put that all aside because we've spoken about chips. Now let's get into the first Apple Silicon Mac that they announced, and that was the MacBook Air. So the MacBook Air has an eight core CPU, which is the M1 chip, and this performs three and a half times faster than before. It also offers up to five times better performance in the GPU as well compared to the previous model, which is just crazy. So according to Apple, this allows you to edit multiple 4K video without any problems. Also, they mentioned that the MacBook Air performs three times faster than 98% of PC laptops. Like what? That's just insane. Now they also mentioned that the machine learning performance is also nine times faster, which is great for you data analysts and stuff like that. And also the storage is two times faster as well. Now I never complained about the storage in the old MacBook Air because that was really, really quick anyway. But I guess faster storage is a win. <laughs> oh, and here's the kicker. So we get all of this performance with no fan. 
Yeah, I'm not even kidding. A MacBook Air without a fan. So for any of you who have complained about the fan noise in your current MacBook Air or, or had to return your MacBook Air because of the fan noise, yeah, you're not gonna have a fan in this MacBook Air and you're getting better performance. Like, that is pretty crazy to me. I, I'm literally speechless because I didn't actually think that they would remove the fan from the MacBook Air, but they have. So what this means is that we now have a CPU that performs really well, graphics that perform really well in a very, well, almost basically silent MacBook Air. Like, was that not what we were all asking for from the MacBook Air? I think so. And it gets even better. Battery life is up to 18 hours in terms of video playback, which again is crazy. So for any of you students who want to pick this up, this is going to be a no-brainer for you. One thing that they haven't updated is the webcam. This is still stuck at 720p. However, they did mention that the software behind it is a lot better. So we should see, you know, much clearer video feeds and, and stuff like that through the 720p camera. But I have to obviously test this out. One thing they have updated is the screen. So we now see P3 wide color support in the MacBook Air. So the same MacBook screen that I have just there in the MacBook Pro, we now now see in the MacBook Air, which is again, always a plus because it means that for photo editors and video editors and color grading and everything like that, because now we have a more vibrant screen, a more color accurate screen and a display that obviously displays more colors means that for us, this is going to be a great machine. Oh, and they haven't changed the pricing. It still starts at $9.99 and for education, you get a hundred pounds off of that as well, which is a win for pretty much every student if it performs the way that I hope it will perform. Also, if you're enjoying it so far, please hit that like button so that me and the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing a good job. Now, this Mac that they announced next was something that almost no one guessed, and that is the new Mac Mini. So the new Mac Mini now has the M1 chip, which is gonna perform much better than the current model, and it performs up to three times faster than the current model. And also, in terms of graphics performance, we see six times better graphics performance than the previous model. In terms of machine learning performance, we see it up to 15 times better too, which is a massive jump. So for you scientists out there, this will be a machine that will basically be able to handle your workload. So this Mac does have a fan, but a very small one. And in my opinion, I don't think it's gonna run very loud. This also has two yeah, USB 4 and Thunderbolt ports, which support up to 6K displays. Now the pricing has actually dropped to $699, which is $100 less than before. And one thing that they didn't mention is that this also has Wi-Fi 6, which is nice to see in a Mac Mini. Unfortunately, one thing that we don't see is 10 gigabit Ethernet, which I know a lot of you are gonna be upset about. And lastly, we see the MacBook Pro. Now this is unfortunately still the 13 inch, no 14 inch this year. We know that this is something that Apple was gonna do anyway, because they typically don't like to change the design when they add in a new chip, they sort of start with the current models and then the year later we'll probably see the 14 inch that's my best guess anyway so the macbook pro has the eight core cpu which performs two and a half times faster than before and in terms of graphics performs five times faster than the previous model as well now it mentioned 8k playback on davinci resolve i don't know why they didn't mention final cut which kind of worries me as a final cut pro user but i don't really use 8k but does that mean that in davinci resolve it performs better than final cut pro on these new M1 silicon chips? Who knows? But one thing that definitely just shocked me was the fact that the MacBook Pro has a battery life of 17 hours for browsing and up to 20 hours of video playback, which is apparently the longest ever that they've shipped in a MacBook. What this means in real world terms is that it can perform four times more code compiling on a single charge than the previous model. This also includes Wi-Fi 6 as well. Now we see better video quality. Again, it's the same story, still the 720p webcam, 
but obviously better processing behind the scenes. We still see two Thunderbolt and USB 4 ports, no 4 port on the lower end models, and there's no mention of a 4 port model at all, to be honest. And they stuck with the same pricing at £1,300 basically. One thing that was really interesting for me on the website was that both the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro only see RAM upgrades up to uh, six, uh, 16 gigabytes, no 32 gigabyte option. And in terms of the memory, we only see up to two terabytes. So no four or eight terabyte options, which is very interesting to me. I don't know why they wouldn't offer this option because I know that some people do actually upgrade their uh, SSDs to four or even eight terabytes in their MacBooks. So I don't know why they didn't offer that option. Maybe next year they will. What this could mean is that does the MacBook Pro not need as much RAM when it comes to the performance of these? So does this mean that in terms of the eight gigabyte model, will this be enough? Because at the moment, I've got a 16 gigabyte uh, model at the moment in terms of the MacBook Pro. And I even top that out sometimes. And I kind of actually wish I went for the 32 gigabyte option. But does it mean that the eight gigabyte option might be enough if you never maxed out the 16 gigabyte option? It'll be, I'll have to obviously try this out. But in terms of trying out, we can actually order them today. And I've actually ordered both the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. So once they come in, hopefully next week, I'll be able to test them out and obviously put them through their paces because I've got the current MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, both Intel, obviously. So we'll see how these perform against each of those models. So stay subscribed if you want to see that. And I'll be doing a whole bunch of tests on, the, on these new MacBooks because I know that a lot of you guys love to see it. I know you guys love to see my comparisons as well. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And on a side note, Big Sur comes out on Thursday. So make sure if you've got a Mac at the moment, upgrade to that. I know I will be. But there we have it. Just a quick video on the latest Macs that Apple has just announced with the One More Thing event. I literally ran to this chair and just pressed record. So if you've enjoyed it, then you know what to do. Hit that like button. That really helps me out. But as always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are and whether you're going to be picking up either the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro or even the Mac Mini. If you haven't already, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content when I get these Macs in and those comparisons. But if you want to see more from me right now, then click on one of these two videos if you just can't have enough of my content. I mean, I know they're pretty good. I'm joking. Anyway, anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.